Good morning, everyone. On behalf of Superintendent Hoffmeister, I'd like to welcome you to our virtual ATSI training on addressing the, change, addressing the challenges of chronic absenteeism. This webinar is an extension of the content presented at our regional meetings that were held in February and March and is adjusted to fit this a virtual forum. This webinar is being recorded and will be sent to you via email and added to our ATSI website and ATSI Hub. The Office of School Support and Improvement under Executive Director Dr. Brooke Myler supports all designated schools to increase students' academic growth. ATSI schools work with the TSI team, Michelle Seibold, which is me, the Director of TSI, and Leslie Schmidt, our TSI specialist. Please reach out to either of us if we can be of any assistance. We are always happy to help. Our learning targets for the day are for you to have an in-depth understanding of what chronic absenteeism and loss of learning really mean, resources from attendanceworks.org, including self-assessments for district and school use, a multi-tiered response to chronic absenteeism, and chronic absenteeism resources. We will be monitoring the chat box, so if at any time you have a question, please enter it in the chat box so we can answer it. For today's session, we are going to be talking about the broader definition of chronic absenteeism and how it relates to loss of learning. It is important to keep in mind that the Office of Accountability at the Oklahoma State Department of Education defines chronic absenteeism a bit differently for report card purposes. For example, for report card reporting, a student with activity absences like soccer at the high school level is not considered chronically absent. However, the broader definition found on attendance works considers all absences, even activity absences, because when a student is not in class, they have a loss of learning. The challenge for us is twofold. How do we increase attendance of all of our students? And how do we address loss of learning for students who are not in class? For reference, we have the Office of Accountability and report card calculation for use of chronic absenteeism. It is excused absences, unexcused absences, and suspension is equal to, they all go into the chronic absenteeism formula, and 10% or more of instructional time lost during the school year would be considered chronically absent. Let's look at a side-by-side -side comparison. It is clear one of the main differences between all three is the report card calculation of excused absences unexcused absences and suspension as making up our report card definition of chronic absenteeism. All three hold the emphasis of academic impact of missed days as an underlying core value and each call out effective ways of encouraging students and families to be in school every day and on time. When looking at absences through the lens of loss of learning, it is important to note that it is more than getting students to school, but emphasizing how schools can remediate for loss of learning. Why does loss of learning matter? The minutes and days students are not at school add up to a significant amount of loss of learning. For many of our chronically absent students, we see poor academic performance and low confidence in school related tasks. Do you have a family of a student who is chronically absent say, my child only misses twice a month, it can't be that big of a deal? Well, we know that those two days a month add up to 20 days a year, which is equivalent to an entire month of school. That is a pretty significant amount of loss of learning. When I was a principal, one of my biggest frustrations were the amount of students who were tardy. I had a group of students who were consistently 10 to 15 minutes tardy to school almost daily. Added up over time, those students missed almost one and a half weeks of learning time during the school year. 
absences and tardies are frustrating for teachers and administrators. It can be a big problem to fix. Fortunately, attendanceworks.org has many strategies and interventions schools can use to increase student attendance and decrease loss of learning. Leslie Schmidt, our TSI specialist, is going to walk us through the resources at attendanceworks.org. Okay, Leslie, you now have control of the screen. Thank you, Michelle. And again, I wanna thank you for joining us today. I would like to share some of the things that Attendance Works has to offer in reducing chronic absenteeism at your school. This is a wonderful site. There are numerous resources, videos, and uh, various materials that you can use at your school to address chronic absenteeism. So let's take a look at Attendance Works. I'd like to begin by defining the problem. As Michelle said, um, Attendance Works has given us numerous uh, strategies to deal with chronic absenteeism. The first we're gonna look at is the problem, the actual problem. One of the things I found fascinating is that more than 8 million students are missing so many days of school that they're academically at risk. Michelle mentioned loss of learning. This is the crux of the problem. If the students are in the school building, then they are not learning. One of the things I would like for you to see are the 10 facts about school attendance. This is a great piece to share with your students, your families, and your teachers. The first one I'd like to point out is the very first fact. Absenteeism in the first month of school can predict poor attendance throughout the school year. Half of the students who miss two to four days in September go on to miss nearly a month of school. When we begin the school year, we don't really give that much thought, but that's going to be something we're gonna really have to focus on if we want to address the issue of chronic absenteeism. Also, I wanted to point out number five, by the sixth grade, chronic absenteeism becomes a leading indicator that a student will drop out of high school. Obviously, not many families are thinking about high school in the sixth grade. We have to focus our families on chronic absenteeism and address it before their student drops out of school. Also, I wanna take a look at a more positive on number eight. When students improve their attendance rates, they improve their academic prospects and chances for graduating. Obviously due again to loss of learning. If they're in the building, then we can teach them. That's the issue that we need to address. Okay, let's go up to another tab. Under take action, I wanna show you under educators. We're going to go down to Teachers, okay. as educators, we're always looking for things that are going to help. Under this tab, you can find several things to click on. We're going to click on teachers. This is a good focus piece when you're talking with your teachers about addressing chronic absenteeism. These bullet points right here need to be addressed and they need to be done. Taking role regularly, showing students that you care when they miss school, reaching out to frequently absent students to find out in a supportive manner, why are they missing school and what you can do to help them attend more regularly. Work with parents. We're gonna talk about that a little bit later, how a solution to chronic absenteeism is a multi-tiered approach and you have to include not only the students but the families and the school community. Create a nurturing, engaging classroom that will encourage your students to come to school. Work with colleagues to develop and implement a school-wide system of incentives and rewards for good attendance. Notice we're not saying perfect attendance. We want to be able to reward good attendance. And then encourage families to partner with other school staff 
making sure that uh, you can, as a community, get support that you need to help your children and your families. Okay. One of the other things I want to point out on this tab, there is an actual attendance works teaching attendance curriculum. Yes, some students need to be taught what to do, why it's important. And if you click on learn more, it will allow you to look at several videos, but the one I want to point out is this is an actual curriculum that you can register and receive free of charge. Many of the materials on Attendance Works are free of charge. So you can register at this site and have access to the teaching attendance curriculum, and it's a good one. There's different modules, why we teach attendance, creating a culture of attendance for primary grades and secondary grades. So this is a wonderful site, okay? Let's take a look at the resources tab. Under resources, I want to go down to building capacity and click on toolkits. It's very touchy here. Attendance Works offers a number of toolkits. You see the list here where you can open them and use numerous materials at different grade levels. Count Us In is a great one for addressing the general problem of chronic absenteeism. They also have early childhood, kindergarten transitioning, uh, a toolkit for principals. Positive, uh, power of positive connections, again, this is community, looking at incentives, and then state and local toolkits. When you talk about how to incorporate the school community, the greater community at large, this is a good one to look at. There are so many toolkits on this website. It's very helpful. So I would strongly recommend that you spend some time on the Attendance Works website. Also under resources, I would like to look at positive engagement. You'll notice as I scroll over positive engagement, there's attendance videos, exercises, initiatives, posters, banners, handouts for families, so many things that you can do. One of the things I want to point out under attendance videos, these are very well done. Um, they're short little snippets that you can share at meetings, uh, PTO uh, parent nights, um, not, a, not very long in length. Um, some of them are just community advertisements uh, that have been focusing on chronic absenteeism. Uh, we've got some uh, celebrities that talk to us about what we should do and why we should be attending school. Uh, also, uh, this, I want to point this out, reversing chronic absenteeism. This has been a highly successful program in the Grand Rapids, Michigan area. The strike for less than five days absent. It's it lasts about six minutes, so it's a video that you can easily share with your community members. Um, so that's a good one to watch. I just wanted to point that out to you. Also under resources, let's take a look at actionable data. The data tools offered at Attendance Works can be extremely helpful. There are several of them to choose from. What I'd like to highlight today is calculating chronic absence. When you open this site, it gives you access to a couple of tools, one at the district level to track attendance and one at the school level to track attendance. Again, most, most everything on this site is free of charge. If you'd like to look at that in detail, you can register here. Again, it is free. There are handouts regarding this, uh, these two tools, and then you can register and use them at your school site very helpful for tracking your attendance if you don't have anything in place. Also under actionable data, I want to click under more resources and then actual resources and show you what I think would be a very helpful tool for you. And this, that's how you would register. Click on that. Going to the bottom, Right here, student attendance success plans. What I like about these is they are multi-level and they're also in Spanish. 
So if you have a community um, that needs the Spanish version, it is available. You'll notice the preschool level, elementary level, secondary level, and then just a general school success, success plan, and also the facilitator's guide. The student's absence plans are a wonderful tool that you can use within your school community. Okay. Also under resources, there's a number of issues that under research you can look at. Um, the attendance works reports. Also, if you want to focus on early education or elementary or secondary levels, there's many research articles and materials available when you click on those. Also, what I like is students with health issues. How do you deal with those students that are missing school because of health issues? There's a number of things that, that are research-based that they offer here at the site. Homelessness, again, affecting chronic absenteeism. Transportation, as elementary students, they cannot transport themselves to school. So that's something to look at as well. And then school climate, a huge factor in creating a community where students really want to be at the school. So lots of research-based materials there as well. Many articles that you can actually look at. Okay. And then going back to the very first tab, the last thing I want to share with you on this site, addressing chronic absence. Let's go down to the key ingredients. On this page, you're going to see that we have, um, and again, this, this is a slide that I will share with you, but I wanted to show you that it is located on Attendance Works. When we get to this slide, you know, that's, that's something I want to look at. So I wanted to make sure that you know where to locate it. And then it breaks down each one of those areas, the positive engagement, you can find resources, actionable data, you can find resources. Capacity building, resources available. Shared accountability, resources are available. And then the strategic partnerships, resources are available. So as you can see, the attendance work site is one that is extremely valuable to you in addressing chronic absenteeism. I suggest that you look at attendance works in depth. One of the things that we've developed at the State Department is a scavenger hunt. This is a great tool to use when trying to get your teachers involved with addressing chronic absenteeism. Um, it can be done at a faculty meeting, in part, or in whole, uh, but it basically helps your teachers and you navigate the attendance works site, asking several questions, having them click through some things, figuring out what's important. Um, but this scavenger hunt's a fun way to get them involved in that site and to learn a little bit more, maybe something that they didn't know, or it would help you to address attendance uh, issues at your school. So this again is a really great tool that you can use. And then again, I mentioned at the end of the tool, looking at that Strive for Less Than Five video. Again, it's about a six and a half minute video and um, it really gives some insight into how you involve your school community and change your school climate for your students. All right, whoa, my mouse is going crazy. All right, so chronic absenteeism, the continuous improvement cycle. In addressing chronic absenteeism, you wanna make sure that you develop a cross-functional district, or especially, most especially, a school leadership team to annually participate in the following steps. Completing the assessment at attendanceworks.org, and I'm gonna share the first page of that assessment with you in a moment. Um, but this is a live link to the assessment at Attendance Works, so it's easily found there when we try to make that as helpful as possible. But, com but you need to complete each of these five steps. Once you establish your school leadership team, you're going to debrief and set goals, tally individual results onto a single assessment, then determine your strengths, gaps, and differences of opinion. Identify practices to continue and prioritize areas for improvement. Make a plan, assign responsibilities, and establish a timeline for completion. Communicate the results to district office staff, to schools, and community partners to engage them in implementing the plan. 
and then reflect on the initiatives that you begin. Are they working? Do you need to tweak them in any way? This is something that once it's established, it should be ongoing. The cycle should continue. Each step should be uh, met and then readdressed to make sure that you're doing what you need to do. I mentioned this oval diagram, and again, it is on, located on Attendance Works. Actionable data, making sure that it's accurate, accessible, and regularly reported in an understandable format. Capacity building, expanding the ability to work together to interpret the data, engage in problem solving, and adopt the best practices to improve attendance. Strategic partnerships between district and community. Partners address specific attendance barriers and mobilize support for all ingredients of the plan. Shared accountability, ensuring that chronic absence is monitoring and reinforced by policy. Make sure that's in place. And one of the critical pieces, positive engagement. Using caring relationships, effective messaging, and a positive school climate to motivate daily attendance. Each of the steps is critical in the cycle. And once you complete the cycle, don't think that you're finished. Repeat it again and make sure that you continue to address your chronic absenteeism. This is one of five pages that you, you will see when you actually open the assessment. Actionable data. You'll just basically look at the bullet and decide as a school, you can look at this, but since we're addressing ATSI schools, we would prefer that you look at your answers based on the subgroup that identified you as an ATSI school. Maybe multiple subgroups, but consider them, not necessarily your whole school. So when you answer, and are we addressing this? Where are we in this? Is this one of our strengths? Think of that as if your ATSI subgroup is students with disabilities. Is that a strength for us? Is this something we do for them? Are we okay for now? Could we be better? Is there an urgent gap we need to address? Or you just don't know. And then how do you know? What things do you need to know better understand how to fix this problem. And then you would address it for each of the five bullet points. Um, the assessment contains this same format for each of the areas that we just talked about on the oval. And again, um, at the bottom of this example is a direct link to Attendance Works to get to that self-assessment. So decreasing chronic absenteeism, it is a partnership something that we have to do. Challenge five, strive for less than five, has decreased chronic absenteeism in Grand Rapids, Michigan. Uh, we were gonna take a look at that, but we're, we're having a few problems with the video. So I would strongly urge you to go on to Attendance Works and see what this program is about. See if it's something that you can do at your school, how it might spark interest in fixing the problem. Is it something we need to do now? It really is a great video. And finally, as I mentioned earlier, everyone needs to be involved in solving chronic absenteeism. The best solution is a multi-tiered systems approach. Tier one, probably the simplest, and addresses the majority of your students. These are the students that are missing five to nine percent. They're at risk, but they're not there yet. Students missing less than 5%. They're satisfactory attendance. This is the one that will encompass most of the students at your school. That's when we need to do the most to keep it that way and to bring in those that are struggling with chronic absenteeism. By doing that, we need to have an engaging school climate with positive relationships with students and families. Impact of absences on achievement widely understood. As Michelle said earlier, if they're not in the building, that equals a loss of learning. We have to make sure that our parents or guardians understand there is an impact to the absences. We have to make sure that that's understood by everyone involved. Monitor your chronic absence data. 
Are you staying on top of it? This is when we really need to do that and make sure that we're going the right direction and that trying to eliminate chronic absenteeism in our school. Good and improved attendance is recognized. Again, notice I did not say perfect attendance. Good and improved attendance is recognized. This would be part of tier one. And then common barriers are identified and addressed. After you complete your assessment, what were those areas of strength? But then let's focus on what were the barriers that are keeping our chronic absentee, our absenteeism numbers where they are? How do we improve, All right? Tier two, this becomes a little more complex, but it's still very manageable. Personal, personalized early outreach. Go to those students and families. Try to figure out what's going on and how can you fix it for those individuals. What do you do? Create an action plan that's designed and implemented to address the barriers that those families might have. To increase engagement with them. Make sure it's important that not only the student, but the parents or guardians know that this is where they need to be. Let's find a way to get them there. And then develop those caring mentorships. Maybe you have um, some teacher's assistance or even the teacher giving them the call, letting the families know, hey, this is really important. So they're calling me and trying to figure out what they can do to help. That's important. In this tier two group, you're the, going to see the students that are missing 10 to 19 percent. Again, as Michelle stated earlier, if they miss 10 percent of the school year, they are chronically absent. So we need to get these students in school. Create that action plan and implement it. So this is moderate to chronic absence. Tier three, this is the one that is a little more intense, but it's also more high cost. The first two tiers, you might be able to find a few donors, create some incentives, um, and it doesn't cost you a whole lot. But this is when you really have students missing 20% or more severe chronic absence. You have to have a coordinated school and interagency response. You may have to pull in agencies to help you find out what's going on. Create that individualized student and family intervention, and sometimes even legal intervention. We want to try and use that as a last resort, but if a student's not showing up for school, we may have to involve others. This is something that we would try to avoid by really jumping in to tier one and tier two strategies. But this is something that, that once in a while, we, we really have to go beyond what we can do at school and bring in those agencies and those others that can help. Research is clear that schools and districts can impact student absenteeism rates. Involve your community in the success, the solution for success. It's got to be something that everyone is involved in. Um, again, there's so much that you can see and so many materials and ideas that attendance works, I strongly urge you to spend some time there and investigate that side. Also at the State Department of Education, we have several resources that you can also investigate, ways to curb chronic absenteeism, um, but these are a few sites that you can also look at. And then finally, uh, our contact information. Again, feel free to contact Michelle, um, my director, and then myself. We'll be happy to help. During this time, you know, we're teleworking from home, but if you give us a call, those calls are going directly to our emails and we will get back to you. This is an important issue for us. I know it's an important issue for you. So uh, please contact us if you need our help. Leave us a message and we'll get back to you. Thanks again for joining us today. Please take care of yourself and stay safe. Again, thank you so much for joining us. We will be sending a link to our slide deck to you. And then also, um, we will have the video of this presentation. We will, of course, send that to you as well. I do want to remind you of our ATSI hub. And that link is embedded in all of our um, and Leslie and I's email signature. So if you ever lose it, um, that's where you can find it. And we're also, you can get to the link on our State Department of Education website by navigating to the Office of School Support and Improvement and then navigating to the right 
and clicking on designations and then clicking on ATSI and that will give you a direct link to our hub as well. Again, thank you so much for joining us. We appreciate your time and hope you have a good rest of your day.